I know you're going to enjoy this next session. The title of the session is Nothing About Us Without Us, Partnering with Youth and Young Adults with Developmental Disabilities to Conduct Rehabilitation Research. And it's presented by Dr. Jessica Kramer, an occupational therapist. Dr. Kramer's interests center around the involvement of children with disability in research and intervention planning, the development of theory-based assessments and interventions, and disability rights and culture. Her research is supported by many, many organizations, but I'll just share a few of them. The National Institute of Health, the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living and Rehabilitation Research in the U.S. Administration for Community Living, and foundations such as the American Occupational Therapy Foundation. Along with her youth partners and interprofessional research lab, Dr. Kramer's work has led to the development of Project Team. It's a group curriculum that teaches transition age youth with developmental disabilities how to identify and resolve barriers in their physical and social environment. Dr. Kramer has also contributed to the development of numerous rehabilitation assessments that many of us know of. These include Child Occupational Self-Assessment and Occupational Self-Assessment, um, the Short Child Occupational Profile or SCOPE, the Model of Human Occupation Screening Tool, the Worker Role Interview, and the Pediatric Evaluation of Disability Inventory Computer Adapted Test. And most recently, a self-report version of the PD called the PD Pro. Her talk will draw upon her body of research to illustrate the value in partnering with youth with disabilities in rehabilitation research. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Kramer. Today I'm going to be talking with you about the collaborations in the Yale Lab and the innovations that have come from partnerships with youth and young adults with developmental disabilities. Let me start out by acknowledging that partnering with youth is not easy. And it really requires us as researchers to shift how we approach our position in academia. For example, when my relationship began four years ago with these two gentlemen, even though I wanted to partner, I had a hard time acting like a partner. One of them kept on telling me my ideas didn't make any sense. The other would interrupt me during our meetings and go off on what I thought were tangents. Well, lucky for me, they didn't stop talking. And when I was finally ready to listen, our partnership led to innovations in rehabilitation research. In the Yale Lab, our mission is to produce high quality research and products that support best practice in rehabilitation and enhance the lives of youth and young adults with disabilities. We do this in two primary areas. The first is rehabilitation assessment, specifically patient reported outcome measurement. The second is in community-based intervention. Today I hope to show you how partnering with youth can lead to real innovation in rehabilitation research. I'm going to share some strategies for partnering that we use in the Yale Lab, and I'm going to finally share some of the innovative and exciting things coming out of the Yale Lab. Nothing About Us Without Us is a call for change from the disability community. It's a shift in how we think and approach research, from doing things to youth and young adults with disabilities to partnering with youth and young adults with disabilities in all stages of the research process, from conceptualizing the problem to generating the potential solution to collecting and analyzing the data. Researchers and academics may make incorrect assumptions about the importance of a topic to young people with disabilities or the acceptability of a proposed intervention or assessment. When interventions and assessments are not important or acceptable to youth, 
Translation to practice is not likely. In addition, researcher assumptions can really perpetuate the status quo and make it difficult to identify truly effective and innovative approaches to rehabilitation that meet the needs of young people with disabilities. However, when we move to a doing with research model, we break out of those professional assumptions. Partnering with youth with disabilities in the development and evaluation of rehabilitation products can enhance effectiveness and lead to real innovations that matter to the lives of youth and young adults with disabilities. Let me give you an example. The Yell Lab was working to identify innovative content for our new youth self-report of functional skills. When my researcher assumptions were guiding that brainstorming process, we got information that really wasn't innovative and frankly sort of duplicated what was out there already. As you can see here, when I asked about daily activities and getting dressed, we got a fairly boring picture of a disembodied hand with a glove. Now, mind you, putting on a glove is pretty important when it's cold in a place like Boston. But I think one could easily imagine that putting on a glove is not really what's important and valuable to youth and young adults with disabilities. Conversely, when I stopped being guided by my researcher assumptions, and instead we asked the youth, what was important to you? What activities do you want to do? They identified very innovative and important content. For example, as we see here, having the fine motor ability to use touch screen kiosks that are such an essential part to our community everyday transactions. That information is not on any current use self-report. That's innovation. So how can other researchers get similar types of results and partner with youth? It doesn't just happen. We as researchers have to foster an environment that enables youth with disabilities to be authentically engaged. Only then can real innovations happen. I'm going to talk about four strategies that we use in the Yell Lab. The first strategy that we use to foster youth partnerships is personal experiences. Researchers can help youth understand the often abstract concepts that are the focus of research by grounding them in real life experiences. Personal experiences can also support decision making in research by providing opportunities to see what are potential decisions and outcomes. This strategy is illustrated by the example I shared earlier about asking young people what they wanted to do. I'll give you another example. One young lady indicated that something that was important to her was going shopping for a gift for a friend. By gathering data in real time and also reflecting back on that experience by watching a video, this young lady and the youth team identified a range of functional skills that aren't on any current self-report. For example, swiping my credit card, remembering my PIN number, we all have a hard time with that, and saying thank you to the cashier. A second strategy to foster innovation is to break down tasks. Researchers can scaffold the multi-step processes that are required for reasoning and judgment in research. Researchers can also help youth integrate information or data from multiple sources. So for example, we support youth in the Yell Lab to analyze and interpret data. Our team of youth needed to decide, well, what final questions did they think we should include on our self-report? To help them make this decision, youth viewed the results depicted in color-coded bar charts. Then, they completed an interpretation worksheet that was also color-coded. This helped them identify patterns in the data and make a final decision about which questions to include. A third strategy that we use to foster youth partnerships is Universal Design for Learning, or UDL. UDL really stresses the importance of allowing for multiple means of expression. For example, writing, typing, speaking, taking or drawing pictures. UDL also highlights the importance of conveying concepts 
with images or manipulatives. For example, our field notes use guiding questions. The form can be completed on paper or can be dictated or on computers or iPads. It also includes images to help people understand the questions. These levels of support allowed the youth team to generate really detailed data, even without formal research training. For example, when a young lady asked, what did you have to figure out to do your activity? She thought about her activity of looking for an apartment. She identified that she had to ask for help. She had to figure out what to search for on the internet, what number to call, and finally, the questions that she would have to ask and write them down so she would remember when she was on the phone call. Those are really important tasks for transition age youth that she identified. The fourth strategy that we use to foster partnerships is peer support, where members work together to accomplish tasks with assistance from each other, rather than relying on the university researchers. Peer support facilitates an environment in which power is more equally distributed, and youth feel more comfortable sharing perspectives that are different from the adult researchers. Remember these guys? Luckily for me and for the project, they didn't let up and together they came up with innovative ideas. So when we use these strategies to foster youth partnerships, we get the innovations like we see in the Yale Lab. Let me share some of them with you. As I've discussed, the Yale Lab is seeking to create a youth self-report, patient-reported outcome of functional skills called the PD Pro. Now, most self-reports in rehab are structured around professionally defined concepts. For example, daily activities. What does daily activities mean? It means something to us as rehabilitation professionals, but really it's a term that has little meaning to the everyday lives of young people with disabilities. No wonder youth have a hard time providing accurate responses on a self-report that might be about daily activities. This style of self-report also requires youth to think about tasks that don't seem to be logically connected in any way, going from washing my hands to opening a jar to buttoning a shirt. Instead, if we ask about really fun and really meaningful activities, like going to a restaurant, then we can ask about the daily activities that are related to that, like washing my hands or squeezing a ketchup bottle on some delicious french fries. Asking about going to a restaurant is a familiar task that is more easy to understand and recall, leading to more accurate self-reports. Asking about going to a restaurant also opens up other possibilities in self-report. Now we can ask about other related tasks that aren't just daily activities. For example, communicating with a waiter or my friend, moving around the restaurant, or problem solving to figure out if I have enough money to order what I want. Our research in the Yell Lab is trying to determine if a youth self-report designed around these everyday life situations would allow youth with disabilities to provide more accurate and reliable self-reports of functional abilities. Another study in the Yell Lab is Project Team, a program that teaches transition age youth with disabilities how to identify and respond to barriers in the physical and social environment. To be effective, my youth partners and I knew that we had to turn a very sophisticated advocacy process into something that was really easy to understand by youth with a range of abilities. I suggested incorporating a goal plan do check approach, which we know from the research is effective in changing thoughts and behaviors. I suggested the plan step would include identifying the barriers in the physical and social environment, identifying the solution, and then you should move to that do phase of asking for a change. But the youth collaborators drew from their own advocacy experiences to suggest an additional step. Plan step three, would using the strategy change the activity for other people? The youth shared, before asking for a change in the environment, we thought it was best to put ourselves in other people's shoes. The youth insisted that advocacy would not have a positive outcome, even if they got their way, if other people were angry and alienated. Instead, 
they insisted the optimal solution considered and met not only the needs of themselves as a person with a disability, but the needs of everyone. This suggestion became a central step in the program's advocacy process. As this example shows, youth with disabilities can contribute new knowledge to the research process that can foster real innovation in rehabilitation. The Yale Lab would like to thank our funders, the National Institutes of Health, Nidler, the American Occupational Therapy Foundation, and the Noonan Memorial Research Fund. Please learn more about our, our research. Uh, you're welcome to contact us. And thank you for joining Health Matters today.